Hey guys, I'm P-Freak, welcome back to Pokemon White version. Last time, we captured three more of these six Seven Sages that are on the run, meaning we only had one Seven Sage left to go. And then we made our way across the village bridge and here to Lacanosa Town. Honestly, it was kind of an uneventful episode, and I apologize for that. Anyways, in this part, we're going to briefly explore Lacanosa Town. There's not much that we can do here, but there are a few key things we want to note. Inside the Pokemon Center here, we've talked to this girl. Do you know about the Gracidia flowers? Since early times in Sinnoh, people made a bouquet of Gracidia flowers to give to someone to show their feelings of appreciation. If you come to this girl with a shaman, preferably a fateful encounter shaman, then she'll give you a Gracidia flower to, to turn that shaman into its sky form. So, nice little thing to note about. There are only like two items here, and they're both hidden, so... Let's see. This one's right up north here. Where are you? Hello? Are you there? Yes, you are. A Max Repel. Never hurts. And then... Over here. Oh, we stood right on top of it. And the Elixir. Yeah, so... That's about all the items that are here, but there is one little thing that we can do here. It is... I believe... Right over here... Is it? It's not in here, is it? I think it's in here. Maybe? Uh, no, looks like we just interrupted a couple in their lovemaking. Whoops, uh... This is a nice house, though. Jeez, has a freaking pool on the roof? Is it here? I believe it's you I want to talk to. Oh, what do you want now? Did you did you pick now to listen to my stories? Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you. Behind our Lacanosa town, there's a big hole in the ground. That hole way in the past. Uh, I'm just so tired. That hole there was a, a big crash down inside was... Big scary, really scary. All right, well, I guess we can't really listen to her story while sleep while it's late at night. Oh well, but there's some, she says there's some big hole behind the town, so I guess we should probably go explore that. But in the meanwhile, well, we should try to get there. Oh, come on, really? <sighs> I'm also seeing that we have cut trees and strength builders, so I should probably grab my HM user. All right, I got our HM user with us. I've actually switched over from a Watchhog to a Bibarel since we found Bibarel on the village bridge path earlier. And Bibarel is honestly the best HM mule in the entire game because it's able to learn Surf, Strength, Waterfall, and Cut, all four of those, easily. And it could also learn Rock Smash when that, that was a thing. But you have, of course, the four move syndrome, so you can only use, um, you can only have four HMs at one time. An item over here, we have a Max Ether from that, okay. It might be useful later on. What? Are there even stronger Pokemon here than I... Oh, no, I just ran into an Audino by complete accident. Uh, whoops. <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't know. Typically, I want to, but uh, I've been finding actually stronger trainers to get a lot more experience. Yeah, um, now, if you go into the big stadium and the little stadium, there are so many trainers that you can easily just fight and get so much experience every single time it changes. Plus, we also have all the trainers that are along here as well. Let's see. Oh, we got something up there. Let's see. I think in order to get around here, we have to surf here. Ah, oh, damn. I actually kind of like the music that's on this route. It's very epic sounding. In like a non... Um, ooh, prism scale. In like a non-loud uh, sort of way. Anyways, uh, the prism... Oh, I see. This is, allows us to get over here. Prism scale is an item that they introduced in this game. So beforehand, the Pokemon Feebas, you had to evolve it by maxing out its beauty stat, which was a contest stat. Now, you just give it its prism scale, scale and trade, and boom, you have yourself a Milotic in a lot faster time. Here we have the giant chasm. This is the hole the lady was talking about earlier, so we definitely want to explore this. Uh, no hidden items around here. All right, inside we go. There's some hidden, hidden items in here. And we've heard this music before. I forget where we've heard this music. If I find it, I'll put it on the screen. Big mushroom. Nice. Funny thing about the giant chasm is that I actually play... It's like a minor um, sort of place you can go to in this game. Oh, wait. Um, the... Damn it, what's it called? The tower. The, like, uh, dead tower of all the dead Pokemon or whatever. I know that's oddly specific. Um... Oh, I can't remember the name of it right now. Whatever, you guys probably have already seen it on screen. All right, anyways. Yeah, it was the tower that we heard this music for. Anyways, as I was saying, this doesn't really have that much significance in this game, um, but it does have quite the significance in the sequels of this, so when we get around to that game eventually, we'll be seeing this place again, definitely. All right. 
have another tiny mushroom. So basically, it's just a bunch of selling items. Nice, but not really necessary at this point in the game. I mean, I'll take that. Third round. Over here, we have a comet shard. Nice. That's a really high uh, selling item, too. That's basically the ball mushroom of the um, fossils slash minerals slash stones you can get. All right, surf across here. Let's see. Got a bit of Hey, let's use the max repel while we have it. Oh, we have two max repels. All right, anything good over here? Any reason for me to be surfing? Let's see. Doesn't really look like it for now. I mean, we're inside this path now, which gets us here. And if we take this route, we can't go back. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Well, we have this uh, exit here that we can go through. Let's go on through. Now, I think this area actually changes in the winter time as well. It's another one of those areas. So, again, if you want to play through this game, I definitely recommend you play through it during winter time because a lot of stuff gets. Oh, hi, Dino. A lot of stuff gets locked away if you don't do it, if you don't play through winter. Now, granted, there's also some stuff that gets locked away if you play through any season that's not winter. Uh, Ditto's interesting. Ditto is basically a Pokemon that allows you to breed. It's able to breed with any Pokemon you want, so. Um, mostly, especially genderless Pokemon. Typically, genderless Pokemon cannot breed, but they can breed with Ditto. So, uh, the only exception, of course, are Pokemon that are in the Undiscovered Egg Group. And wait, okay. Weirdly enough, Nita Queen and I believe Nita Arena cannot uh, breed. Oh, we saw the repel up. I don't know if it's they're in the Undiscovered Group or whatever, but yeah, for some reason they just can't breed. It's a weird little quirk that's been in the game since forever. They really should fix that at some point. Looks like there's a... Oh, I missed an item. Awesome. There's a lot of items around here. Kind of a uninteresting hole besides all the items we get around here. That sounds really bad. Uh, full heal. Nice. Yeah, what's it called? The giant chasm? This is less a chasm and more, more just like a field of things. Yeah, we've kind of gone in a circle, dude. There's still more stuff. We Oh, we got a TM over here. TMO3 Psyshock. That is a psychic special psychic type move that actually puts the opponent's um, physical defense in the calculation damage calculations instead of the opponent's special defense. So it's really nice when you're ha when you're a special attacker and you're having to deal with physical with uh, special walls such as Blissey or Snorlax. You can instead use Psyshock to counter that because their physical defense is lower than their special defense. It's not a perfect counter, but it's definitely a nice change. Okay. I keep thinking that the repels are turned. Are, we don't have a repel on because we keep running into Pokemon, but it's not the case. What did I just do? Uh, forget uh, having to come in here during the winter time. I guess. Shit. Well, this looks to be the only way we can go now. If we go inside here. Oh. Interesting. You're gonna want to save real quick. This is Kyurem. Kyurem is basically the third Pokemon that belongs in the, I believe it's called the Tau Trio. Basically, it's the third Pokemon of Reshiram and Zekrom's um, group, whatever it's called. I, I'm, it's kind of, kind of blanking on the names right now. Basically, for, uh, spoilers for the story, but if you made this far, you kind of know the story already. Um, this was... This is basically the husk left behind of Reshiram and Zekrom after they split apart. If you remember the story that was told to us briefly back over in Isor City... Uh, I believe it was Isor City. Was it? Anyways, Reshiram and Zekrom used to be one being. Um, this was the husk left behind after they split into their own separate beings. So, yeah. It's, a, it's still a Pokemon, weirdly enough. It is a... Dragon Ice type Pokemon, which is an interesting combination. Doesn't really help too much, I don't think. Uh, we are in a cave, and it actually is a 37 point of performance, so. We can start throwing dust balls now. Uh, anything else interesting about this game? Or about this Pokemon? Well, there's the. Oh! Oh, it has Endeavor! Oh, that's scary. Okay. Why do you give a legendary Pokemon Endeavor? Okay, wow. Anyways, um. This is this made a lot of people think that the sequels for this game, or like the enhanced version, was going to be Pokemon Gray, because at this point we had Pokemon Emerald and Pokemon Platinum sort of create a pattern. 
but then they completely surprise everyone by having Pokemon Black to Pokemon White to. This Pokemon, again, has more of a presence in those games still, despite them not being Pokemon Gray, but still, it's definitely... It definitely gets more interesting in the later games. In this game, you kind of just... It just exists. Uh... Anyways, give me a moment. I'm gonna try my best to capture this thing. It's level 75. Oh, I do have one story. I think I... This is a Pokemon I actually have captured before in, like, a regular Pokeball at some point. Just, like, after my second... Yeah, I caught it at a regular Pokeball just recently at one point. I believe that's what it is. Either that or caught it in two uh, Pokeballs, which at this point, it's kind of not too surprising. Wow! Okay, sure. That works, I guess. This has so far been the worst Pokemon to capture. Look, I have beat Barrel out, and I've had to use one revive on frickin' Borealis. It can produce ultra-cold air. Its body is frozen. Wow. That is incredibly boring. That is an incredibly boring Pokedex entry. Uh, fuck you, Kyurum. Alright. And, uh, yeah. That was the main thing here. That's basically gonna be the last legendary we'll deal with for... Eh, maybe not too long. There's actually one of the legendary, if I remember correctly, that we can we have access to that we're gonna have to encounter and have to try to capture. Uh, so you know, actually, real quickly, we are gonna grab the rest of the items out here, but as you can see, everyone's kind of well dead. So I'm gonna go revive them over in Lacanosa, and I'll be right back. While we're here in the entrance cave, though, to uh, Giant Chasm, we might as well push this uh, strength boulder down. I think this is the last thing we need to do here. I don't think there are any more items for us to get here. So now we can actually just wind around and get back over here nice and easy. All right, now the Kyurem is taken care of. If you don't manage to catch Kyurem, if you manage to knock it out and you like don't revert back to your last save, you can always rebattle it after you defeat the Elite Four again. We have a Carbos here, nice. Let's see, I didn't miss that the first time. Actually, now that I think about it. Oh well, another ditto. It has an interesting cry, I guess I'd say. But it's like one of those cries that actually is shared with a lot of, with um, a few other Generation 1 Pokemon, if I remember, if I remember correctly. Wow, I cannot speak, apparently. Um, I think it shares its cry with Poliwag? I think something like that. Yeah, the thing is, in Generation 1, because of the limited um, memory and space that they had on the chips, you can only have so many, like, cries on there. Oh, here is what we definitely want. Finally, why is this locked away to another post-game area? It's another freaking item that I've been wanting, and it's locked away in post-game. Like hell, even in Omega Ruby now Sapphire, yeah, it takes forever for you to actually get to it, but you get it before the end of the main story. Ice Beam, we already have Ice Beam on Neo for a while, but I want to give it to Elizabeth to actually deal with uh, grass types. I mean, Sludge Bomb does basically the same thing, but never hurts to have Ice Beam as well. And poison isn't really useful in this generation, as much as it will be in later generations. Okay, is that every... is that all the items we came here for? I think that's all the items we really need to worry about, so I think it's the end of the giant chasm. Let's get on out of here and continue on through Route 13. Alright, continuing on Route 13 here. We gotta put on a repel again. Yay. Friggin... <sighs> I hate having to constantly go into the menus to deal with that. Alright, we went through the bottom area first, now let's actually go through here. You look like a lady of interest. This Wingle looks like it lost three grams on Route 13. I wish I could help it. Three grams? What? Oh, like telegrams or something like that? Uh, interesting. Oh. I guess that's an item that we have to surf down in order to actually get. Over here we have a Razor Claw that will evolve Sneasel into Weavile if you give it and let it level up during the nighttime. And we found, I guess this is one of the grams. Yeah, gram two. All right, so yeah, they mean basically telegrams. Interesting. Also, I guess we gotta go head back down to actually... Uh, yeah, we just gotta head back down in order to actually continue on through here. So... Let's go ahead and surf. Thankfully, the fisherman will not notice us and battle us if we surf in front of it. Not until, I believe, later generations does it do that. So it's a hidden item right here. It's another heart scale. Yay, we're doing this again. Okay, let's see. What else do we got around here? Uh, no, the repels were off. Oh, you look to be... not a trainer? What am I doing? I'm hunting for treasure. Treasure hunting is fun. Sometimes things are buried in sand dunes. Actually, I just found something. That's the same one I found before, so I'll give this to you. We get a red flute. Oh. Hmm. Okay. We're hunting for treasure here tomorrow, too. Let me find something, so if you have time, stop by. 
Okay, so I guess this guy's like a little treasure hunter that will give you some really good items. The red flute, where is it? I believe it's probably in the regular items. It's, oh no, it's, it'd be in the battle items. Do we, do we have battle items? They're just up here, okay. The red flute, a toy flute made from red paper glass. A maniac will buy it for a high price. So in this game, the red flute has no purpose. But in other games, you can actually use the red flute to... I believe the red flute cures infatuation. So it's a way to cure some of these uh, more, like, harder to cure status problems. It was infatuation, and then there's two more. One of them is confusion, and I believe one of them is sleep. I believe it's the blue flute that's sleep. So it's interesting how they made it so they actually don't do anything in this game, though. Kind of weird. Uh, we can actually surf on the other side of this place. Let's see what's on the other side. We'll go into the house in a moment, but I'm curious what the... Oh. Did we accidentally walk into a rippling spot, or... Nope, it's just a wingle that we don't have a repel on for, apparently. Okay. Alright, fix the repel issue. We do have a hidden item over here, it looks like. Let's see. Somewhere here in the sand. A pearl string! Oh, that's another high-selling price item that we can get here. Looks like it's a very isolated house over here. Hi, who are you? You look like a veteran. I found this plate when I was at when I use the move dive in the sea in, around the Dale Town. But I don't know how to use it. You can have it if you like. We get the splash plate. Okay. I have another one. Take this too. And the Draco plate. Are those the only plates you have? They say there's a sunken temple at the bottom of the sea around the Dale Town. Those plates are resting in the temple. Maybe they're treasure. Hmm. Sounds like something we could actually do over in Dale Town. But the splash plate and the Draco plate. They are plates. They, these items were introduced back in uh, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Basically, they're the same thing as, like, the Mystic Water and the Charcoal, where they boost, uh, they boost moves by 20%. Uh, specifically, Splash Plate is water, and the Draco Plate is, well, dragons. Alright, is this a rest house? This might be a rest house. Asmin can teach some Pokemon's ultimate moves. Oh, this is where you learn the ultimate moves. So, the ultimate moves, uh, quote-unquote, are only taught by starters. Basically, it is Blast Burn for fire types, Hydro Cannon for water types, and Frenzy Plant for grass types. They're basically elemental equivalents to Hyper Beam or Giga Impact, where uh, the user, it's very powerful, but the user needs a turn to rest afterwards. So they're pretty good moves, but I don't really like using those kinds of moves. Uh, back in Generation 1, those kinds of moves would be broken, because uh, if you manage to KO the Pokemon with those resting moves, with the moves that require rest, then you would completely skip the turn that you need to rest. Okay, we got dark grass over here with a uh, rare candy in it. Nice. And looks like we got another hidden item somewhere. Uh, Max Revive. Okay, definitely works coming, coming over here, especially since we're out of Max Revives now. We still have Revival Herbs, but, you know, Max Revives are just better. They don't lower the happiness at all. Over here we have... Come on, stop being weird. A Deep Sea Scale. This will allow the Pokemon Clam Pearl to evolve into a Gorbis. Uh, Clam Pearl, Gorbis, and Huntail... Uh, Huntel's the Clan Pearl's other evolution. You need another evolution item in order to evolve it. It's a... It's a Pokemon, that's for sure. I've never really found it too interesting. I've never used a Gorbis or a Huntail before, so... Eh. Like I said. There are a lot of Poke... Like, believe it or not, even though I've played so much uh, Pokemon, there's still a lot of Pokemon I have never used before. Either because I just find them underwhelming, or like... There's just no purpose to use them. So... And, of course, there are bad Pokemon. That's just kind of like when you have almost nine, when you have almost a thousand different like characters you can play, some of them are going to be bad. And you know what? That's okay if some of them are bad, especially if some of them are bad in different ratings. I'm looking at you, League. Don't ever play League, by the way, in case it isn't obvious. It is a mess and a half. All right. Kind of skip this entire grassy area. Let's see. Anything of use over there? There's a. Uh, what are they called? Socialists in this? Um. <laughs> That actually sounds bad. Social Light, I believe, actually, is what they're called in this game. Basically, they're old ladies that will give you a bunch of money if you defeat them. Uh, you're a gentleman, same thing. A lot of money if you defeat them. There's a country here. Let's see what's through here. We have an item. The Electrizer. This evolves, or Electorizer. This evolves Electabuzz into Electivire. I used the Electivire, though. To be fair, it was a hacked, it was... Not an actual Electivire, it was an Electivire used in a ROM hack. It was still a really good Electivire, though. Well, yeah, because the ROM hack kind of just made it better by giving it a, a fighting type, so... Alright, and over here we have TM29 Psychic. Again, another really powerful TM they don't give you till late game. 
that is really annoying. Psychic, for those of you who don't know, is, well, a psychic type special attacking move that has 90 base power and it lowers the opponent's special defense by one stage occasionally. I did not mean to run into you girls, whoops. Alright, with those guys taken care of, let's see if we can avoid any more battles before we get over to the next town. Again, I'll take care of these guys off screen like I have been doing. Gain some nice experience because these are some rather high level trainers, so. Alright. Anyways, moving on down, we go here and we have a gate. Nice. Going through the gate. Welcome to Undella Town. Kind of a nice little place. Very serene in its music, too. The sea. It's a source of life. The sea. It's a lot of water. Uh, if you ask me, it's a little too much water. So, teach this move to your Pokemon and you can dive into the sea. We get the last HM. HM06 Dive. Kind of a late time for an HM or whatever. Inside the hidden machine is Dive. The darkest parts of the sea are called diving points. If you just dive there, you can dive all the way to the bottom of the sea. So yeah, believe it or not, you can uh, the diving mechanic from Generation 3 returns here. And thankfully, we still have B-Barrel. Does B-Barrel have pickup? What's that item that has? An orange berry. Okay. But yeah, uh, this is another reason why I just didn't give um, Surf to... Or in case I didn't mention already, I don't have Surf on the B-Barrel because, well, I just have Surf on Elizabeth. So it'd be kind of redundant if I had Surf on both of them. But it's also because we have Dive here, so we're gonna get rid of Super Fang in there. Our HM Mule's complete. Nice. All right, that's not the only thing we can do here, though. There are a few other things we can do. Let's see, oh, we have this right over here. The big villa belongs to the riches. We go inside. Jeez, that is a fancy villa. It's all glass. You know if a jet plane comes flying by with the supersonic, you know it's gonna shatter the entire thing, right? Oh, but it's a nice place. I guess they're just letting anyone come in here. As you can see, I am an ultra-rich billionaire. As you can see, my hobby is to collect rare items. In fact, the outfit is ultra-expensive and rare. Can you see it? Can you? There's something that this billionaire wants to get his hands on, even if it means spending a lot of money. Do you have such a rare item? Do you? Uh, no, we do not, unfortunately. Here, you change your mind. Will you sell me the rare item? Will you? So, this guy will come to play later on. Let's see. I believe, though... Oh. Is that everything? Huh. Okay. Well, this guy will come to play later on. I guess he's the only member of the Riches here, or maybe... Oh, wait, are you a part of the Riches? You have an extremely bored look on your face. Okay, I'll let you have a very exciting Pokemon battle with me. Sure, why not? I guess this guy is also a part of the Riches. Yep, the Riches Draco. Oh, oh boy. I see. Little Scamp gave me freaking 12,000 Poke Dollars. How the hell does he have that much money? I like you. I let you see a very special thing, so follow me. Uh, oh, and we're just going back inside the house. Okay. What do you have to show me, kid? Isn't it great? Isn't it spacious? This is my dad's villa. You can use it freely. Or I can use it freely. But when I came here, surprisingly, there was nothing to do, so now I'm bored. As you may know, my dad is totally obsessed with items at the ruins. Hey, you're bored, aren't you? Come here tomorrow, too. I don't mind having a battle with you. Alright, well, I guess that's um, another, ba another daily battle we can have. Is that all that's here? Just the dad and his kid? Huh. Thought there'd be more people here. All right, before we continue on though, I do actually want to change up my party real quick. All right, now that we have Mantra back in our party, I believe it's this one, yes, hello. Oh God, this music, what's this? What an uncanny resemblance. It's surprising to meet another trainer who has intense eyes like that, Pokemon trainer. What's your name? Okay, I'll remember that, P-Freak, nice to meet you. I'm Cynthia, I'm a Pokemon trainer too, like you. I have an insatiable curiosity for researching Pokemon myths. I'm sure you know about Undela Town's Abyssal Ruins, right? I'm staying here at my friend's villa so I can investigate them. In order to get to know each other better as Pokemon trainers, I'd like our Pokemon to have a match. Would you care to be my opponent? Oh uh, boy. Yeah, sure. Before I send out my Pokemon, my heart always begins to race. Interesting. My Pokemon and Pokeballs are radiating with happy feeling. Are you the reason? What are you? Yes, as if we didn't get to see her enough already, we are once again in the presence of Cynthia. For those of you who don't know, and if you don't know how, she is the champion of the Sinnoh region. She is the final boss of Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, and she's often known to be a really, really tough opponent. I have decided to start out with Mantra because Spirit Tomb, in this generation at least, has no weaknesses. So, might as well start out with one of my strongest Pokemon here, and it's starting to double team. This was, it was one of two things I was going to do. I was really hoping this was not the one I was going to choose to do. Like I said, I hate Double Team, and it's a pretty universal hate, too. But we did manage to land an Earthquake, so maybe 
with a uh, sand rush. Oh, or sand force. No, we didn't. And Cynthia's probably going to heal now. Oh, wait. Oh, come on. Yeah, no, Cynthia's definitely going to heal now, and it has two double team boosts. Ugh. Come on. Damn it. Alright, I was hoping it to do something else. Spirit, the Spirit Team actually has a Will-O-Wisp, so I was hoping for it to go Will-O-Wisp Mantra, because I actually have a Rossberry on Mantra. Okay, there we go, that works out. I actually have a Rossberry on Mantra right now, in order for us to uh, clear that burn. Next up, she sends Milotic. This Milotic has Marvel Scale, so if it has a status problem, then its defense, I believe, gets raised. Uh, we're just gonna send out Elizabeth. Elizabeth's our only way to fight uh, water types. So. And this is why we gave Elizabeth Energy Ball, because, again, Elizabeth's just the best one to deal with water types, and it's best to actually have a move that is super effective on water types in order to use it. It's kind of why I wanted to also give Elizabeth Thunderbolt instead, but, you know, Energy Ball works out, and wow. I forgot Milotic is also just incredibly tanky as well. And she is Dragon Tail Beast. Okay, we have Icarus out now. Um... Acrobatics is just going to be our best bet. We might actually... Let's see how much this does. Oh, so close. That's probably going to be the end of Icarus, though. There's no way Icarus is surviving that. Yeah. Okay, well... Hmm. She's probably going to heal again. I doubt Cynthia has only one uh, potion in this battle. Because, again, she's a champion, so she's no doubt a lot of potions with her. Oh, no, she, she does only have one potion in Thanks for the free heal. Okay. She's not as scary if she doesn't have multiple potions, but yeah, that's kind of sucks for Icarus. Icarus has kind of been falling downhill. She kind of sucks, but whatever. All right. Got Mantra to 66. What's next? Electros. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to send out Mantra again, just so we... Because uh, definitely uh, Wild Charge is coming. Yes, I have the move that's really right next to me here. So... Yeah, we are definitely going to want to ignore that. We unfortunately cannot use Earthquake because, of course, Electros, it has Levitate. Interesting idea, I guess. So we're instead going to set up another Sandstorm, get the Sand Force up, and it has Flamethrower. Good thing we set up the Sandstorm, and also Electros, I don't think it's supposed to be that much of a special attacker. No, it did not matter. Huh. Okay, then. I guess we'll send out York. Let's see how much a return does. I will, of course, use Revival Herbs if I really need to, but I'm trying to see how much I can do without the use of them. Wild Charge, okay. You should be able to tank that. We are 10 levels below her Pokemon, so that's probably also a reason why Mantra just uh, fainted there. So, yeah. Take care of this Electros. Unfortunately, that's not even her scariest Pokemon. We have yet to meet her scariest Pokemon. That's only half her team as well. Next up is Lucario. Still not her scariest, but I am. York's definitely gonna fall here, so I'm actually gonna take this time to use the Max Revive to actually revive Mantra. If Mantra doesn't deal with Lucario, then I'll definitely get Borealis too. Mantra might actually not, because Lucario is rather fast and is part fighting type. So I might actually get Mantra to do, or Borealis to do it instead. Yeah, let's just do Borealis instead. Just play on the safe side. Unfortunately, Heat Crash is not going to do a heck of a lot, so our best bet here is to just use Brick Break. Yeah, it's fast enough, so yeah, naturally. But that's going to be normally effective. Right? Oh, but that still did a lot. We can at least do a lot of damage here. Ah, hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... It's probably going to go for another Aura Sphere, so I'm going to actually switch over to Elizabeth. To, yeah. Do that, and then we're going to use Surf here. It does have Dragon Pulse. We are, thankfully... We are special tanky, so... Th yeah, we survived that easily. And the Surf should take out this Lucario, no problem. Alright. It's four out of six Pokemon down. Okay. Let's see. Who's next? Her, next up is her scariest Pokemon, Garchomp. This is a pseudo-legendary Pokemon, and it's a freaking Garchomp. We do have Ice Beam on this Pokemon, plus we also have our Vanillux, so a Garchomp can be really fast. Uh, let's see what happens. Maybe I should have put Toxic back on Elizabeth just for this Pokemon. Nope. Okay. Mm. Neo isn't even at full HP, damn. 
Okay. Neo's probably not gonna outspeed a Garchomp. Let's see. Garchomp does have four times weakness to ice, so if you can at least get off an ice type move, this Garchomp is almost guaranteed to go uh, to faint. Okay, well, yep, this was the Pokemon that we were most scared about, so I'm just gonna have Borealis back in here to sack. I'm trying to think, what can we do? Okay, I have an idea. Oh, it's not using Earthquake? God, really? And it has Earthquake, it has Stone Edge as well. Okay, so maybe my idea won't work as well as I'm hoping for. So... This might actually be the end of this battle for us. So, let's see if we can get a nice beam off. Ah, damn it, we need Stone Edge to miss there. Like, if it doesn't use Earthquake, like, and it uses Stone Edge and Stone Edge misses, that'd be really great for us. That's the only way I could see us actually defeating this thing. That, or we need to stall out Stone Edge uh, power points, which means that we need to use Pokemon that are gonna be weak to Stone Edge. Yeah, we're gonna have to use. I think we're gonna stall out to stop the trap point. So it's used two, before, two already. It's not gonna use it on Montre here. That's fine. So switch over to Neo. So we're gonna use this to revive Icarus, who might be able to bait out another Stone Edge. Three stone edges, okay. And of course, it's crit as well, and it keeps hitting all these stone edges. Of course, stone edge never wants to miss when the enemy team's using it. Alright. Stone edge number four. Still super effective, okay. It's fine. We just gotta hope that with Stone Edge down, then that actually... Uh, okay. Let's do Mantra. Okay, that's Stone Edge number five. Yep, of course it hits all five Stone Edges, too. Mm, okay, well, it should be out of Stone Edge power points now. So now... God. We don't have anything really physically tanky except Mantra, but the thing is that Mantra just gets one shot by Earthquake. Well, since it's out of Stone Edge, let's actually see if we can use Icarus to get multiple revives off at once. Yeah, we're basically just going to start PP stalling this Pokemon. I mean, that's kind of how we're just going to have to do it. Yes, I did know I rushed into this unprepared, but... You know, it, it, it was here, and I wanted to do something. Okay, so it'll ignore Earthquake, and we don't have any more Stone Edge. So the best thing it's going to probably do is either use its Dragon Rush or Crunch. Um... Let's at least get Neo back up. Alright, it's crunching. That's fine. Icarus might be able to survive. Yeah, Icarus does survive crunch. So that's good. So now, let's get one more Pokemon up. Let's get Elizabeth back up. It's not It's not testing its luck with Dragon Rush. Alright. We got two Pokemon in now, so now we can try to look for a um, actual attack. Hopefully Garchomp... Let's see what happens. Okay, it uses Dragon Rush. Let's see how much that does. <gasps> okay, this might be the opportunity we need. Come on, please. One shot it, one shot it. Yes, nice. Perfect. All right, good, very good, very, very good. All right, biggest Pokemon out of the way. Her final Pokemon is Braviary. When was the last time I was driven to a corner like this? Uh, probably when we were fighting you as um, our Sinnoh counterparts. All right, it's just gonna KO the Nilux here. That's fine. What I'm thinking is that since we have Elizabeth out, we can use Elizabeth to tank a few attacks here. But then I'm gonna go and use another Revival Herb on Icarus. And then we'll use uh, Rock Slide to try to KO it, uh, switch over to Icarus and use Rock Slide. Hopefully Elizabeth can maybe tank one Brave Bird. Oh, wow, holy hell, she did. 
I don't think those leftovers are gonna help you, honey. Um, in that case, I'm gonna actually probably quickly revive Mantra as well, just to be safe. Uh, this Braviary actually does not have a fighting type move on it, so the only fighting type move Braviary can learn is Superpower, so Mantra is a good backup plan. But I want to see if Icarus can actually get off an attack. Here. I hope Icarus can get off an attack here. All right, here's your moment of truth, Icarus. Nice. There we go. This, we use like 15 revival herbs, but. There we go, we defeated the champion once again with Thunder Level Pokemon. Nice. My heart is pounding so hard because I had heat of battle with you. You really are a great trainer. Thanks. Trust me, it wasn't the most, um, honorable. That was beyond my expectation. What an exceptional battle. You certainly bear a resemblance to that trainer who would face Gir Giratina. Oh, well, pardon me. I was just thinking about that. I love being here in the spring and summer. I can't stay all year because there's so much to investigate in Sinnoh as well. You're a great trainer and it would make me happy to see you again someday. So I guess we can fight her every day in the spring and summer, but not in the fall time. If we come back in here, yeah, she she's already just gone. But yeah, you can rebattle her basically, I believe, every day in the springtime and summertime. Okay, though, with that taken care of, I think this is a good place for us to stop. We went in Kakiurim. Um, definitely didn't help Wingle with all his grams. We went in Kakiurim. We went, arrived here in Nandela Town, learned about this ruins over here in Nandela that we are going to go investigate eventually. And then we also had a battle with Cynthia, which was, once again, another really difficult battle. That's going to be it for now. If you like what I do, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media links. All that will be in the description. Next time, we're going to explore those ruins that they were talking about. I'll see you guys then.